Good afternoon, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. We are beginning the panel session of the dissertation board for the defense of Zalina Barinkhoeva. Specialization 10.01.10, journalism. The topic is political generations in modern Russian journalism. Under the federal law, as of May 2016, and the order of St. Petersburg State University, I, Vera Chikasova, professor of the Department of EPR of St. Petersburg State University, was appointed chair of the station board. I would like to introduce the members of the station board to you. Professor Igor Blachin, Doctor of Political Science, Professor of the Department of Theory of Journalism and Mass Communication, St. Petersburg State University. Professor Alexander Proning, Doctor of Philology, Associate Professor of the Department of TV and Radio Journalism, St. Petersburg State University. Professor Konstantin Kirov, Doctor of Philology, Professor of the Department of Journalism and Mass Communications at Chelyabinsk State University. Professor Dmitry Strovsky, Doctor of Political Science, research scientist at Erol University, Israel. I'd like to say that under the federal law, as of the 23rd of May 2016, on the federal law and science and state scientific and technical policy, St. Petersburg State University is entitled to confer its own academic degrees. The corresponding order number 68121-1 on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University was issued on the 1st of September 2016. According to it, the panel discussion is valid, providing two-thirds of the appointed board members are present. The total number is not to be fewer than four people. The dissertation board today consists of five, five people, five of which are present. Therefore, we have a quorum. Let me announce the agenda. The panel discussion shall not exceed two hours. Item one, the chairman's brief presentation about the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. Chairman's replies to questions, if any, five minutes. Item two. The candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research, no more than 15 minutes. Item three, questions to the candidate regarding the presentation, no more than two minutes for each question. The candidates reply to the questions. Number five, reports on the status from the members of the board with their critical remarks and questions, no more than 10 minutes per person. Item six. The chair's report on the status. Number seven, the candidate's comments about the reports on the status. No more than 15 minutes. Item eight, questions from the audience. The floor will be given to the note board attendees. They can give a brief account of their ideas and or ask questions to the candidate about the research. No more than five minutes per person. It is necessary to fill in the registration form and give their full name before the talk. Item nine, the candidate's comments about the talks given by non-members of the board, no more than five minutes. Item 10, presentation of the candidate's status supervisor, no more than three minutes. Item 11, a five minute break before the open balloting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcasted. Item 12, open balloting, vote counting and recording the results in the minutes of the session. Item 13, deciding upon conferring or not conferring the academic degree. And finally, item 14, candidates closing speech, no more than two minutes. The agenda is quite packed. I hope everyone will keep within the time limits. Before we proceed with the agenda, I kindly ask you to switch off your mobile phones. Thank you. The panel session of the dissertation board is being recorded and broadcast 
on the internet, on the SPBU website. The panel session is also interpreted into English. Let us start with the first item on the agenda. The thesis by Zalida Bakinhoeva was submitted in conformity with the requirements for the academic degree of the candidate of political science. The specialization is 10.0110 journalism. The topic is political generations in modern Russian journalism. The thesis was approved for defense by the order of the CBU academic secretary, order number 12843-1. The dissertation board was set up by the order of the SPBU Academic Secretary as of the 27th of December 2018, and I have already introduced its members to you. The candidate has submitted the following documents to the SPBU Academic Secretary. An application to Professor Nikolai Kropachev, Rector of SPBU, on the approval of the cities for defense, submitted on the 14th of November 2018. A report of the city supervisor, Professor Dmitry Gavrilov, Doctor of Sociology, Head of the Department of PR and Business, SPBU. List of published works containing three items which describe the research findings. All the works are published in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Federation. Letter of verification as of the 19th of January, 2018, number 04A. 1.8, issued by SPBU and certifying that Zalina Bakinhoeva was enrolled in a postgraduate course at St. Petersburg State University from the 1st of December 2012 to the 20th of October 2016, specialization journalism, and that she passed three qualifying exams in history and philosophy of science, A4, foreign language A5, and journalism A4. The next document was an expert statement from SPBU on submitting the cities for defense, approved by Sergei Aplonov, SPBU Vice Rector for Research. University Diploma number 0718 from SPBU, issued on the 6th of July 2012, giving Zalina Berkinehoeva the qualification of a PR, PR specialist by the decision of Higher Attestation Council on the 5th of June, 2012. And finally, one more document that's a series in Russian and English, a printed version with a manuscript copyright and a digital copy. The series formatting and reference list comply with the state standard P07.0. The above mentioned documents complied with item 12 of section 3 of the order on granting academic degrees in St. Petersburg State University. Now the floor is given to the candidate for the brief overview of her research findings. Please keep within time the time limit, which is 15 minutes. Good afternoon, dear members of the dissertation board, chair, and attendees. The topic of the thesis is political generation in modern Russian journalism. The issue has been acute for the global community for many years. It all started in the antiquity when philosophers s looked at social dynamics as based on historical and social aspects of demands which people have, people of certain age. However, our scientists have been have got interested in this topic in the recent 20 to 30 years due to drastic social, political, and economic transformations. When we witnessed a gap in values and certain continuity, political factors largely influence the generation theory. And this is especially true for the Russian reality. Western scholars look at political process as one of the uh, generation forming elements. However, Russian political sciences speak about political generations as an independent phenomenon. So we try to introduce our own vision on this issue as related to a politically influential group of professionals, that is journalists. 
this is what makes the, the topic relevant. The symbiotic character of political and professional levels of legislation remain, remain little studied. Mass media is regarded as a vehicle of socialization. And uh, the journalist is also affected by this influence. No scholar has ever focused on the fact that a journalist is affected by this influence as well as values obtained during socialization. So presumably there is a merger of political values and professional values when an individual practices uh, some profession during the political socialization through the political, through performing the political and ideological function. This slide shows the theoretical foundation of our research. The object of the research is professional and political practices of Russian journalists in their generational dimension. The subject is given on the slide. The aim of the research, analysis, and generalization of modern theoretical approaches to the study of demographic, political, professional generations in general, and political generations in Russian journalism in particular, and on this basis, working out a new research vision of this issue that takes into account all significant levels of socialization, the theoretical core of which and the principles of classification can be considered universal. In this case, it's a question of a universal set of value-based choices, an attitude towards dominant values, a dispute around certain values. The objectives are also given on the slide. Objectives define the structure of this study. I'd like to give a brief overview of the content of the parts of the dissertation. The first part focuses on the theory and methods to study political generations within Russian society. The first section focuses on political socialization. Generally, this term is understood as the process of a step-by-step -step formation in an individual, a certain picture of political world, um, experience of political activity and political communication adoption of norms and traditions of political culture that facilitates the development of qualities and uh, features to adapt to the current political system and to perform functions and roles that facilitate the stability of this system. Political so socialization is understood as a catalyst dominant in the formation of values of every generation. These are the differences that lead to generational certification. This part focuses on the models of political civilization processes, their interpretation and review. Mass media is regarded as a special socializing agent that creates an outline of a certain um, conceptual environment which modifies values of an individual. Finally, we analyze theories by, by Neil Hovey and William Strauss, which speak about the shifts in values due to periodic changes in the environment. We criticize this approach. The theory is reduced from its global perspectives uh, to local specifics. So the next paragraph focuses on Russian reality. The, the second part of this chapter focuses on the Russian state of the arts of this area. In general, um, this focuses on the transformation of sociological uh, theories uh, into the theory of political generations. We analyze the works of such scholars as Yelena Shestopal and Nikolai Golovin. Processes which take place in the political life of Russian society facilitate generational stratification including but not limited to the time factor. This allowed us to redefine the concept of political generation and to differentiate from the demographic generation. Then we studied factors and agents of political socialization and it showed that mass media plays a huge role in uh, social and generational process. On the one hand, a journalist is a recipient of the trend, an object of socialization. On the other hand, he is also a subject of uh, public activity and creates new public forms. His profession presumes that he uh, communicates with the sources of trend, 
and um, makes his contribution into creating these trends. We found out that political generations are not formed in a, a typical pattern because an individual combines political and professional socialization, hence the term professional political generation. This, per this section also gives characteristics that make a person belong to a certain political generation. This is based on political, economic, personal, and professional values that also depends on the journalistic practices a professional uses. We created a comprehensive model of modern Russian journalism. We introduced a um, concept of the trajectory of professional development. We offer a classification of how these phenomena can be implemented among journalists. We offer a structure of the journalistic environment of Russia, which comprises seven elements. Each of the elements is split into groups depending on how they join the profession, direct trajectory or professional resocialization, as well as their attitude to basic values. This is intertwined with political processes and personal political experience. This defines the political generation of an individual. The second chapter is practical and it tests the theory we developed in the first chapter. We analyze the content of the Ogonyok magazine. We try to analyze the influence of the environment and the values on a journalist. We speak about the language of socialization of political generations. We analyzed high frequency words which as a tool that reflects a political landscape, a certain picture of a certain political period when practitioners uh, did what they were supposed to do and were affected by the current political environment. Secondly, the experiment we had allowed to criticize uh, the current concepts of uh, generations. There is always um, a possibility of a margin of error. So we decided to analyze expert interviews within the framework of a major study, Media Systems in Flux, the challenge of the BRICS countries that was conducted in Finland at Tampere University with the participation of scientists from Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The cohort included professionals with different demographic, demographic and political backgrounds, with different professional experience, and the pattern of joining the profession. Overall, we analyzed they represent 70 uh, mass media agencies. We also accounted for the geography of their professional performance. The analysis of the interviews allowed to analyze the dynamics of their values depending on the political era they worked in. Each value point, have a look at the table, we witness a split or a developing polarity of borderline generations. These allowed to prove the principles which form the uh, basis of the theory of professional political generations. This allowed us to see how the research may go further in future. The theory of the work is considered universal, so we hope that the methodology we develop uh, can be used to study generations which we didn't cover in our study. Let me focus on the 
research findings submitted for defense. Number one, features of the historical context, socio-political conditions require a specific approach to Russian reality when applying the theory of generations to it. Number two, the political generation in a generalized representation is the subjects of the political space, community of people who unite in one generation or another. First of all, not on the age principle, but on the basis of similarities in the system of values, attitudes, and ideas about politics and power, formed under the influence of the historical, political, and socio-cultural context of the history of political socialization. Number three, in the socio-cultural dimension and dimension of political action, the political general generation is not the same as the demographic, historical, chronological, socio-demographic generation or age cohort. If we consider society as a whole, in principle, political generation can, but not necessarily, coincide with the, specific, uh, with the specified communities. Here, not only the temporal parameters that determine the generational framework, but also the principles of formation and function can differ. This also concerns the principle of correlation of time intervals within the corresponding community. If the demographic generation of age cohort has a temporal interval specified within the classification, then the differentiation of political generation allows correlative mobility of demographic parameters. The political generation is primarily determined not by the time parameters, but by the values and disputes around them that dominate in a certain period of time. The change of dominant values leads to a change of generation. Number four, the change of professional generation is caused by the change of professional values and practices, including technological, economic, and others. Number five, the concept of political generation in terms of the professional functioning of social subjects applies only to areas directly related to political or closely related areas of activity. A professional political generation is a community of professionals who have similar political attitudes that were formed in a certain period of the political dynamics of society, which coincided with their professional socialization. They can came into the profession related to the implementation of political ideological functionality to the influence on the mass consciousness in a certain ideological political period under similar conditions and which at the same time realize similar professional practices. The origin of the professional political generation occurs at the time of the merging of the renewed system of dominant political values with the professional practices dominant in this period. Within one professional generation, there can be more than one professional political generation and vice versa. The modern Russian journalistic community consists of seven generations, one of which is in the formative stage. The political generation is split on the basis of the attitude to basic values. It cannot function without polarization, for example, fact-checking versus fake news production aimed at traffic maximizing. In each specific period, there is a basic opposition of values. In conclusion, I'd like to say that the dissertation was written in line with the plan of the research work of the Department of PR and Business of the Institute High School of Journalistic Journalism and Mass Communications of St. Francisco State University. Thank you for your attention. I'm now ready to take your questions. Thank you very much. Members of the dissertation board, you're welcome with your questions. I have a question. Good afternoon. You are studying the generations, professional generations. And you said this concept and their borders are different from the typical generations defined by age. Why is that necessary? So we know something about the generations. Um, what does it change? Why does it make a difference? And above all, I'm interested how the profession can benefit from that, and which profession in particular, PR, journalism, uh, politics, mass communication. Let's imagine that I'm a practitioner, a journalist. How do I care that it is being studied? How does my profession benefit from this research? Thank you for your question. First off, I'd like to say that my research is more of a theoretical value 
and the empirical data we gathered is meant to illustrate this theoretical narrative of the study. Still, the dissertation is marked by the practical value. Let me specify that during the Q&A session, after all the reports are read. For now, I'd like to say that this theory can be applied to train journalists at universities, as well as in editorial policies. I find this theoretical material effective because if we consider these differences in values of different political generations, we will allow to increase performance. A certain journalist might be sent to perform a certain task. Another person will be sent to perform another, not because they can mm, dislike this task for some reason, but because this person represents a different generation and has a different set of values and attitude to different attitude to to the trend which this task sets. So this is the practical value I see in my theory. What if then we state that uh, in newspapers, page three, written by journalists aged from 50 to 60. Younger people are not welcome to read that because you will find that exciting. Not exactly like that. I don't think it's an effective approach. The question I'm asking is not because I don't respect what you have done or to question its relevance. Any defense is an open discussion. It's about the dialogue. So I wanted to find out your vision on this issue. I don't think that we should state in a newspaper that this or that article was written by a particular uh, journalist from a particular generation, from a journalist by a particular generation. What I meant to say is that considering the set of values, I mean that journalists from different political generations can cover the same topic. Um, political conditions of socialization created or developed a certain attitude in this journalist to their, to this um, issue. And we have to give room for this difference and take it into account. Let's focus on the definition of professional political generation. especially in the view of the characteristic you use in the definition. You write about affecting uh, the public consciousness. It's possible to apply the criteria you mentioned there and the procedure of defining the generation that you use to study professional political generations in other professional groups, in other professional groups, not journalists, some other groups. If that is not possible, then could you give you the reasons why? If that's, there is a chance of doing that, could you please account for that? Thank you for the question. To some extent, I've answered this question in chapter one, section two, when I speak about political generations in Russian society. There I say that uh, professional 
political generations can be manifest in other areas, not only limited to journalism. Art, for example, and some other areas which we didn't consider in our study. In your report, you mentioned media education, and I find this a promising field. In particular, I'm talking about using this applying this theory to educators who train journalists. I'd like to note that by educators and the training, I mean those subjects which are based on journalistic practices. So if we have a professor at the Faculty of Journalism, but he teaches survival skills, it's doubtful this theory of political generation applies there. But if this person teaches journalist-related um, subjects, then this might be of use. Thank you. Page 150, in conclusion, you say that within one professional generation, you say that within one political generation, several other generations might exist. I can illustrate this quote the definition was the quote was within the framework of the professional generation there can be more than one professional political generation this rule also works in the reverse order professional political generation is shaped due to the merger of political and professional the political paradigm can change over the course of time. However, professional practices during the same period can remain stable. They might change, but this does not affect the profession as it is. In this respect, one professional generation might combine two professional political generations, because during this period, uh, something changed in politics, but it did not anyhow affect the profession. If we talk about a political generation, maybe for a long time, some political generation is dominant. However, the profession changes. So within one political generation, we might get to professional generations. Is a conflict of values between a journalism and his readership possible? If there is a possibility of that, how can this conflict can over be tackled? Let's take a uh, journalist from one generation, but uh, his readers are from a different generation. The thing is that we are, if we are talking about the public at large, the society at large, then here we're talking about the demographic generation because the society is not homogeneous. Not all the people are anyhow interested in political ideology. 
However, a journalist is politicized. So he belongs to both a professional and political generations. So at a certain point, these things might lapse and we can speak about certain different visions. But I doubt that a conflict of values is possible because we are talking about polarity. We are talking about the dominance both in society and democratic generations and the profession, political and profession generations. We speak about the dominance of certain values at a certain period. So if a journalist has his attitude to a certain current order and the audience has a different attitude to that, it's uh, a, an issue of polarity. We have some more time. Remember to switch on your microphone. The last question inspired me to ask one more. If we have an editorial board, which includes a journalist who was born in the 1920, 1920, 1950, in pre-perestroika and post-perestroika years, so can these people really find a common language or is, just, is it just a mere issue of hope that a consensus is possible? It's clear that they will not be violent towards each other, but is it possible for these kind of editorial board, board to survive and to be effective? I'd like to illustrate that with a practical example and such editorial board has a chance to exist. Let's take the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. Each representative of these generations will have some core values that were shaped during his socialization, but it doesn't mean that these people have stopped developing. There is this concept, I forgot the word for it, which describes how people evolve during their lifetime. It doesn't mean that a person holds the opinion that, let's go back to my young days, life was perfect there, but now things are different. They will simply have a different attitude based on the conditions of their socialization to current dominant values. I think this is true for any society, for any community, and any demographic generations. The radio station Echo Moskvi is a perfect example to illustrate that. I have a small question. And that's a final question, I suppose. When verifying your hypothesis, you use the methodo method of semi-structured interview. The question is, how many interviews did you conduct? Could you please answer that straight away? 70 mass media agencies, no fewer than two people representing each mass media agency. A semi-structured interview is a qualitative methods. Did you use quantitative methods to pin up your arguments? Thank you for the question. In fact, to achieve the aim of the dissertation and its objectives. So we aimed to create a portrait of a journalist as a representative of, it, of each political generation. We opted for a qualitative method so that we describe a journalist of each generation through the voice of a journalist representing this generation. The tables in chapter 2, section 2, 
illustrate changes. There were questions about um, the professional. The question was about the attitude of journalists to their professional communities, like the Union of Journalists of Russia. There, we thought it was necessary to give some quantitative data to show their change in attitude towards these organizations. Elderly generations are all members of the Union of Journalists, whereas younger generations sometimes don't even know that it exists. Thank you for your reply. Colleagues, are there any questions? So the discussion is over. We haven't received any external reports on the CISIS, so we now turn into the reports from the members of the dissertation board. Professor Igor Bakhin, you're welcome to take the floor. It's now your turn. Chair, members of the dissertation board, colleagues, the dissertation focuses on the relevant topic and focuses on several aspects really crucial for modern humanities. The relevance is dictated by the universal character of the research, typical of any system of political relations. The gap in the hierarchy of values has its specific characteristics. These are factors of political, social, and economic transformation of modern Russian society. Thirdly, this relevance is due to the temporal aspects and intensify cha intensified changes in culture, politics, and other areas of social practice. The object of the study is relevant. These are professional practices of journalism in journalists in their generational dimensions. Journalism is getting stronger. Mass media consumption is on the rise. The cities is interdisciplinary. It combines such areas as political science, sociology, cultural studies, social psychology, and others. The advantages are as follows. The research offers the classification of generations in journalism. She also introduced the concepts of professional political generations. The methods used in the research can be further applied by other scholars. The subject is of interest. These are journalistic practices. In the second chapter, these are media texts, as well as professional and political characteristics and values of journalism. Credibility and accuracy is pinned up by proper methodology proper referencing, and the results of the empirical study. The author has shown a deep approach and a systematic analysis of the research data. The CITES is not devoid of certain disadvantages. The concept of socialization and the analysis of its models speaks mostly not about socialization as a process, but largely about the theories which give rise to certain um, theories uh, which are based on certain political culture. I'd like to state that the author understands that these limitations in theory, on page six, she introduces the category of mentality, which is crucial for the research. When it comes to social and psychological aspects of the research, she should have referred to the works by Kohn, Bacharov, Stuart Hamilton, and others. She could also have used the data from the journalistic corpora journalism in the information field of modern Russia. 
I mean works by Lazutina, Zeloshinsky, Sosnovsky, and others. The aim of the study is really broad in scope. Actually, its first part, analysis and consolidation, is a separate task. We cannot regard the development of new research vision as an aim of the research. Here, maybe you were talking about the descriptive model on pages from 153 to 155. Some of the tasks should also be redefined or reformulated. For example, one of the tasks to formulate the author's understanding of conceptual construct is not accurate. Another one, to carry out an empirical analysis of primary and secondary sources to identify and compare value-based guidelines, the task is given as, as to, to, to identify and to compare, but not the analysis. Mediocation is an interesting topic because it can make contribution to substantiate the basics of the term political socialization due to the use of media resources. There were some minor misprints and mistakes in formulations in the study. To conclude, I'd like to say that the role of journalism in the development of political generations requires more research. This research regards these role as crucial. However, journalism has to be in its definition has to be provided with some extra accuracy because you can do it as a professional activity or as a collection of media uh, writings or as a social institution. To conclude, I'd like to say that the thesis conforms with the major requirements stated by St. Petersburg State University and Zalina Belkinhova can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of sciences, specialization, journalism. Would you like to answer the questions now or at the end? At the end. Now the floor is given to Professor Alexander Proning from SPBU. I'd like to say that I really enjoyed this research. The history and the study of the history of modern Russian journalism is not common because it's a, it's a concentration of interesting concepts which we will not find in any other country. The dynamics of its development is determined by a plethora of factors and complex interplay of authors and their succession. So this aspect of talking about generations gives a human touch to the research and allows for making broad generalizations as well as making forecasts about the development of the profession. So a research in mass media texts really requires understanding values differences in values and similarities in values within the communicative space of journalists. This makes the relevance of the research. The novelty is obvious.
because the author introduces a new concept into mass media studies, the concept of political generations in journalism. She provides a typological model and develops methodology for further studies. Along with that, she understands the difficulty of the, uh, the complex uh, interplay of the relations which create this concept. Let me quote. This allows to suggest the possibility of the existence of a certain fusion of political values with the professional ones if the practitioner is involved in the process of political socialization through the implementation of a political, ideological, functional, which is, of course, true for journalism. The object of the research, aims and objectives are clearly stated. I will not focus on how the dissertation is structured. I will turn to advantages and disadvantages of the study. It's a complete study, and its obvious advantages are as follows. Number one, there is a theoretical understanding of the concept of political generations generations and how it can be applied to journalism and realia of Russian society. She introduced, she made certain adjustments to the Western concept uh, concepts in line with Russian reality. She offers the classification of political generations in Russian journalism. She tries to focus on the facts and logic that she thinks is right. And the dissertation is written as more as a debate. Number four, the practical and theoretical value is obvious, as well as uh, it's obvious for uh, media education. Still, the research is not devoid of advantages. I'm personally a journalist as well, and I believe that the corpora of journalistic text is really limited. The second chapter is smaller than the first chapter, theoretical chapter. And the second chapter only analyzes the texts from the Egonok magazine. All the remaining texts are interviews and others. Those texts that are given in the appendix are not analyzed, so I don't really understand why they are given in the cities. I understand that there's a political research, but not the research in linguistics still. A journalist belongs to a certain generation, and this is visible in what he writes, but not in the questionnaires w where he provides answers to certain questions about his uh, professional performance. So I agree with the distinguished chair that quantitative methods should also have been used in the study. It's not quite clear for me if the candidate took part in collecting the materials analyzed in the second chapter, I mean the international study. If she did, she should have specified that too. Then it would be clear how this material, this data correlates with aims and objectives of the research. As it has been said earlier, there are some minor inaccuracies, stylistic mistakes, and misprints. It needs more profound editing. Still, all the critical remarks I have are a matter of debate. So the accuracy of the results as I see them its practical value and theoretical value 
are obvious. In conclusion, I'd like to say that the dissertation by the candidate conforms with major requirements set forth in the relevant order, and Zalina Bakinhova can be awarded the academic degree in um, specialization journalism. Now the floor is given to Professor Kuro from Chelyabinsk State University. Distinguished Chair, members of the dissertation board, Zalina Bakinhova focuses on theoretical and practical issues, as well as political features and characteristics of modern Russian journalists as regards their belonging to a certain political generation. She studies demographic political professional generations in Russian journalism, and based on that, she develops a new vision on the issue. The analysis of data and the data itself speak about the relevance of the research. The studies is wide in scope. It analyzes theoretical approaches to the study of demographic and political generations. She introduces new concepts of professional political generation and trajectory of professional development. She identified features of professionals of one generation as differentiating from representatives of other generations. She also offers the classification of political generations in Russian journalism. It is obviously one of the advantages of the study. I'd like to focus on certain issues that were not quite clear. I'm a linguist and I'm interested in the methodology of the research. The candidate speaks about studying high-frequency words of the era as a tool to reflect the language of political socialization of generation. On page 108, she states, the units of calculations were nouns, high-frequency words reflect the agenda, characterizing the time, as well as the verbs and adjectives. The purpose of the analysis is to determine the disposition in the analyzed text. Here, the frequency is not the decisive criterion, relating to the figure of the leader. On page 109, she says, the above analysis is referred to the language of socialization of political generations. The meanings that are put in the same words about the tonalities that dominated during the formation of each generation of journalists. The author of the study says the basis of the research is the axiology of journalism. I would have used linguistic uh, methods of linguistic conceptualization. First, the model of the concept is built based on the dictionaries of uh, the Russian language. This is then compared with the discourse model, I mean the text from the Oganyok, mag Oganyok magazine. Then these meanings are ranked according to the field principle of the concept. This is the method developed by Verkachev. And my second question. Do you find it enough to analyze uh, the articles only from the Oganyok magazine? Because the discourse model of one and the same concept in different magazines can be different. All in all, the thesis is written at a high level. It has enough data to illustrate all the challenging issues. It has achieved all the aims and objectives stated in the introduction. My conclusion is the dissertation by Zelina Balkinhoyova, topic political generations in modern Russian journalism, correspond with the requirements set forth in the relevant order of Central State University, and the candidate can be awarded the degree of the candidate in political science, specialization, journalism. Thank you, Professor Kuru. Now the floor is given to Dmitry Stovsky, Professor Stovsky from Emory University, Israel.
I was reading this thesis with an interest because the issues raised by the author are directly related to my family because all of us are graduates from the faculty of journalism. When my mom tried to explain to my son, he was in age six, that she graduated the faculty of journalism in, 19, in, in uh, the year 52, he asked whether that was in 1952 or 1852. I recollected this family anecdote, not because I'm really melancholic about that, but because professional values are not always determined by the values of a generation. In my case, the granny was more progressive in her thinking than my son, who tried to enter the polemics with her on political issues. She criticized him for his conventional views on the political issues. My colleagues have said enough about this. See this? I'd like to share my thoughts and feelings about the thesis. To speak about the differences in professional generations, it is necessary to make it clear what's meant by a profession. What are the criteria of its occupation? What's typical or not common for it? Or as one of my colleagues wrote, now there is a range of journalisms. What a surprise, I thought. We have the medical profession, which is uniform. There is a principle and guidelines how to drive trains, how to steer trains, but we have a range of journalism. So if we don't specify the criteria, we are at risk of getting causistic. I'm really trying to focus on some challenging aspects of the cities. Not because uh, I don't see any value in the cities, but let me remind that um, the defense procedure is all about the debate about trying to find new ideas and more important to speak about the challenging issues than to simply state that the research really exists. So if we don't specify the criteria, I don't really understand what we expect from generations. I don't really understand if the issue of research in professional generations is more acute or it is as acute uh, as in the year 1952 when my mom graduated from the Faculty of Journalism. And that's a really important question. Why do we focus on professional socialization? Why are we doing that? And only if we specify the criteria, we can answer the question which functions a journalist is supposed to perform. These questions need answering to understand the criteria and the values of current of the profession. Because otherwise, we don't really understand why we have journalism. Maybe we should be satisfied um, with the idea, very common these days, let's forget about criteria. Let's spell the words, we hear them. I'm not trying to enter into an argument what's important and what's not. I really would like to clearly 
understand which of the generations is really closer to the understanding of this profession. But if we don't have the criteria, we will not understand that. The pre-war journalists, were they better or not? Were they uh, worse because there were no faculties of journalism then, or vice versa? And this is really crucial for the community of journalism, for its development, for making focus about this job. Some particular remarks that I'd like to make, which will fuel the general discussion. On page 51, the expected candidate states that resocialization does not s imply consistency with the past. Here it is reinterpreted to fit the current reality. What does that mean? How can a journalist drastically change his mindset? I've been living in Israel for three years, but I can't change my mindset. I'm getting ridiculed by those who have lived there for 25 years. They say I'm underdeveloped, but it's not my case. I simply can't change my mindset. I cannot do that. Russian philosophers wrote a lot about that. I mean, Berdyaev, Frank, and Brodsky, Davlatov, and many others. Page 78. A generation is formed by subjects with similar political attitudes who have come to the professional related to the implementation of the political and ideological direction, influence on the mass consciousness in a certain ideological and political period under similar conditions. Who is a professional? What's meant by a professional? My mom, not long before her death, asked me, can your experience teach you can you explain teach anything to current generations? She was an editor for 40 years. She had an, an absolutely effective and adequate understanding of the realia of how the world is organized. So I really applauded to my mom. So I have a plethora of particular remarks over them are uh, given in the report. Finally, not to take any more time, I'd like to say that all in all, I'd like to say to the candidate, I know that the station boards are effective when they are asked to take the floor. No one asked me, but it's all the question of experience and the question of age in many cases. In the thesis, we find that Russian values are great and have a look at Sweden. Now that's wrong because the world is great in its diversity. Yes, Sweden is stable in its political course. But it's not exactly so, because Russia is huge. And when we look at Sweden, we think, huh, that's a minor country, and that's stable. No, each country has a succession of generations, the split of generations, and changes of values. I believe that Zelina Bakinhova later will feel the same when she grows older. In conclusion, I'd like to say that I really enjoyed reading the thesis, and I'd like to say that we it also makes credit to your thesis supervisor. I've known him for a long time, and in certain quotations and formulations, I could see his hand and his contribution. 
he really was great and did a good job of shaping your attitude to the issues of your research. In your research, I really felt the huge contribution of your previous supervisor. And it's really great because this thesis facilitated professional and academic evolution. And in the end, as this is supposed to be done, I state that you can be awarded the academic degree of the Canada Political Science and meet all the relevant requirements. Now, I'd like to take the floor as chair of the dissertation board, and I really have a positive impression of the study because it uses an original approach to adjust the system of political and professional values. And this is a unique research approach. The part of the work in which the candidate asks a question about the formation of uh, generations is effective. When answering the question, she focuses on the process of political cessation as the basis for the formation of poli political generation. During this review, she adds different other terms, such as resocialization, desocialization, and others, underscoring their controversial character. Of special interest is mass media as a source of socialization. Mass media is looked at as a conceptual space which affects the socialization of teenagers. Information covered in mass media often affects political preferences of this generation or their gender behavior. The author states that mass media is like an intermediary. The journalistic community is not only a donor and a recipient of political landmarks, it also a um, facilitator and mediator because it processes and broadcasts or communicates uh, the trends which are set by the political minority. Another highlight is the author's focus on the serial generations, especially when she focuses on the concept of succession of generations. She scrutinizes major provisions of this concept and tries to fit the theory in with the Russian reality. Age cohort, demographic generation, historical or chronological generations do not always coincide with the political generation. Demographic parameters are flexible. Political generation is not uh, is not set by temporal parameters. It's uh, set by dominant values and discourse created around them. Professional generations happen due to a change of professional values and practices. The author offers a classification of generations. There are seven of them. In conclusion, what I liked most that she makes conclusions and sets for the agenda for future research. She states that in future, she can study the interrelation between targeted relations, motives of trust, and targeted behavior. Novelty, practical, and theoretical values, um, value of the study available. Still, the novelty of the study resulted in certain gaps in the research. Section one is not logical at the backdrop of other uh, chapters and sections. She focuses on a wide range of issues which require special analysis, political socialization, political culture, theory of generations, and so on. They should have been 
described in a dedicated section. The focus of the second chapter is on the formation of the image of the era at a certain ideological backdrop. She analyzes publications and keywords to create the value system of different periods. However, this methodological approach is subject to criticism and rather controversial. The question is how lexical units are relevant to the basic element of the system of values. The author does not consider enough conceptual transformations of terms taken as criteria. For example, the word liberal taken as a criterion, according to the author, now uh, has a positive connotation. But in the poet of 1972 by Julia Daniel, liberals are described as parasites on people's misfortunes. Presently, the concept of uh, liberal is getting more and more negative facets. On the opinion stated on page 108, let me quote, the attitude to power as a rule is the same as the attitude to the leader. So we try to focus on those words which allow to identify the attitude to the leader of the state and his actions. However, Russian political practice shows that a high rating of a leader does not always correlate with the level of trust to other institutions of power. There are some inaccuracies and misprints in the text as well. Still, the dissertation is written at a high level, and I'd like to conclude that the dissertation by Zalina Bertinhova corresponds with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order of St. Petersburg State University about conferring degrees, and the candidate can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of political science, specialization 10 journalism. Now the floor is given to Zalina Berkinhova. Could you please provide answers to questions and comment on the critical remarks of the members of the dissertation board? No more than 15 minutes, please. First off, I'd like to thank the members of the dissertation board for the critical remarks and questions. In essence, I'd like to say the following. The first section of chapter one raised most questions. There we analyzed the, uh, <coughs> there we analyzed the texts from the Aganyuk magazine. To start off, I'd like to agree with one of the professors that the methods of philological analysis could have been effective in my study. Further, in my research work, I will definitely resort to them. Quantitative and qualitative analysis of the organic content was complementary in the structure of the study. We tried to demonstrate how the environment with its domineering values affects journalism. Journalist. This is a descriptive section. We describe general social context. We don't speak about the language of generations, but the language of the socialization of generations. So we analyze high frequency words as a tool to reflect the political, specific political landscape and how professional practices merged with political ones affecting the formation of uh, practitioners. I agree that I should have taken some other magazines uh, and newspapers to analyze. However, the empirical data we collected based on the Ogunek magazine allowed us to achieve our aims and objectives. When choosing our approach, we use the concept of the Euro School of Political Linguistics. 
question about the attitude to power and political leaders. Trust to the political system and separate political institutes and agencies is not equivalent to the trust to the leader, and we do understand that. However, in Russian political culture, we believe it is possible to speak about the correlation between the attitude to the leader and the attitude to the to power and authority, which is personified by this leader. Personification became the subject of research by Siegel, Greenstein, Shostakov, and others. So the attitude to such political leaders as Stalin, Khrushchev, and Gorbachev correlated with the attitude to um, other political agencies and sources of power. Here we speak about attitudes of the attitude of general public rather than the attitude of political elites and intellectuals. The name of Professor Strovsky in Russia is known as regards uh, the discussions of about the essence of journalism and the mission of a journalist. However, this issue of the professionalism in journalism was beyond the scope of our study. Still, I agree with Professor Strovsky in that certain criteria of journalism is really relevant to clarify our understanding of professional political value i'd like to say that common political attitudes of people who joined the profession does not necessarily mean identity of identity the identity of views it is based by the discourse, so debate around basic domineering values, around which values are built. We really have to study motivation and values of journalists for a number of reasons. First, Harvey and Strauss mentioned cyclicity. They speak about certain similarities which can be witnessed in generations, jumping f uh, from one generation through two to the next one. Secondly, we have to take into account political, economic, technological, and other aspects of professional activity over the course of time. If we implement the concept we develop in such areas as PR, um, in the policy, in HR policy of mass media agencies, and take into account the type of mindset and the values people of different generations have, this will make the work of these agencies and professionals more effective, increasing their overall performance. Political socialization is regarded as a voluntary exception by citizens of political values and aims within the political system. This is my quote. However, this concept is criticized in the cities. This is not a universal statement. It was just given as a quote from some theoretical writings. My thesis is all about a, a journalist as a person who is not heartless, 
who has a historic memory. Here I mean the concept of resocialization by Berger and Luckmann. The concept is redefined to fit current reality. And my opinion is as follows. We gave this the analysis of this concept because we introduced the concept of um, trajectory of professional development. The next question is about my personal involvement into collecting the empirical data. I failed to mention that in the CIDES I participated in this project as a member of the research team. I conducted interview, coded the data. The project was led by my scientific supervisor, my CIDES supervisor. The texts are not given in the CIDES because of some ethical considerations. I was allowed to use this data, but I did not initiate the project myself. And additional data can be found at the official website of the project. And there were some uh, really physical limitations because the texts occupy more than 1,000 pages. The next question concerns political socialization, and we accept that remark by Professor Bochin. I will definitely be more accurate with some of the wordings in future. I'd like to thank distinguished professors for their valuable remarks about media education uh, and sociological and psychological stance in my further research. Media education will be given more attention in my future study as well. Professor Vachkaso was right that I should have written a dedicated section within the first chapter to focus on a number of research-related concepts. I comprised all these phenomena into uh, one section because uh, I fancied that as an introductory section. I accept the remark about Sweden. I introduced this example because it shows that Howie and Strauss generation theory is not universal. Here, I absolutely agree with Professor Stofsky. Some words about the existential issues and questions posed by Professor Stofsky. Questions about the profession of journalism, its future and transformations, and how, it's, how journalism is different from p propaganda or serving um, power and authority. These issues are crucial, but they were beyond the scope of my study. They are crucial not only uh, from the point of view of philosophy. I have my personal interest in that. Because my professional practices are also from the sphere of political communication. My dissertation is built upon the philosophy of normative media theories. Here I mean the four theories of press, um, works by McVeigh and Monstrand, and such concepts as social responsibility of media and journalist, its watchdog dog function, and other concepts. I've been a student of Professor Gavra for 12 years, and I really share many of his values and his attitude to the research and uh, academic activity, and I really appreciate his style as a scholar. 
Thank you once again for your critical remarks. They really set the trend for my future research. Is there anyone present in this room who would like to take the floor? Then the floor is given to the supervisor, Professor Gavra, Professor, Professor Gavra, head of the Department of PR in Business in Bisbee State University. Dear colleagues, the discussion has been interesting, and I really feel like joining that. However, the format is such that I cannot join it because I'm supposed to perform the function of an advocate, uh, participant, or someone else. And I really feel sorry I cannot join the debate. I've been working together with Zalina Balkinkhoeva for more than 10 years, and it really brings me some pleasant memories. Much is given in my report, in my official report, among my students, I have two categories of people. The first category passes the exam in the theory of communication with a mark five. Well, the second category gets a mark four. Those who get a five then are really under our close attention because we understand that these are very special, gifted students. They really have a potential to conduct research in this field. I will be, I will state openly that I personally invited Zalina to join the postgraduate course. As a result, we see that it was a wise solution. She has made her way starting as a peer in business, and now she works in political PR. She has a position of authority in the Republic of Ingushetia, and it is also highly important because sh here we have an effective profession professional. She made an effective defense of her master studies. I'd like to say a few words about participation in our empirical research. The project ran from 2012 to 2016. It involved a plethora of great scholars from the BRICS countries. Russia was presented there by one of the members of the dissertation board. So as we say, we have been really involved we were all involved in this work because Paulina made the practical contribution as an empirical media sociologist, and she is quite competent in that. To keep within the time limit, one more thing. She is responsible. She is really effective as a scholar. She is friendly and really sociable. I'm totally for confirming the degree. Now I would like to switch off the broadcast because the board members would like to discuss the results of the defense.
colleagues and members of the dissertation board. We continue our panel session. Could you please switch on the broadcast? Is that on? Yeah, that's fine. I put to devote the issue of conferring the academic degree. In conformity with item 23 of the order on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University, let me remind you that the decision of the dissertation board on conferring the academic degree is positive, provided it has received 50% of the words from no fewer than three members of the dissertation board. I'd like the board members to give their opinion. Professor Blahim, I'm for conferring the degree. Professor Pronin, I'm for conferring the degree. Professor Kuru, I'm for conferring the degree. Professor Strotsky, what do you think? I'm for conferring the degree, absolutely. I share my colleagues' opinion. I'm for conferring the degree. Colleagues, members of the dissertation board, let me state that f five out of the five board members have voted for. There are no board members who abstained from voting or were against. So, Zalina Bakinhoeva can be awarded the academic degree of the candidate of, of political science, specialization 10.01.10 journalism. Thanks a lot. First off, I'd like to thank you, distinguished members of the dissertation board, especially those board members who were able to come here from other countries and from other cities. Dmitry and Konstantin, I would like to thank you. It's a huge responsibility for me to gain support uh, from the professors of St. Petersburg State University. It's a great honor for me. I'm privileged, but I feel it's also a responsibility. I'd like to thank the university for the marvelous years of student life it gave me. And my special thank you is to the graduate um, school, high school of journalism and mass communications, as well as the department for their useful advice, criticism, and evaluation of my research. I'd like also to thank mem the members of my family who have been great support. And the two key figures, without them, the today's Defense would not be possible. This is my mom and Professor Gavra for their care and attention, for their contribution, because I'm not a very easy person to, to deal with. It may sound strange, but I would like to thank the topic of my studies because it's flexible, it's um, lively, and it opens up vistas for further research. I hope this will come true as well. Thank you. The session is now over. Please switch off the podcast.